Flooding rains across East Alabama over the last 24 hours and more rainfall is on the way. We'll have the complete forecast for all of East Alabama coming up. Coming up in sports, it's senior night tonight for more basketball teams here in East Alabama. It's also senior night for more wrestling teams. EA and Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. And I'm Mike Statham. This fall, Oxford High School will launch its Global Honors Academy, an assortment of academic programs designed to provide students with a college-level curriculum. In addition to advanced placement and dual enrollment classes, the Academy plans to offer the International Baccalaureate Program, which takes a more global approach than the other two programs. Laura Phillips, head of the Global Honors Academy, says the IB offering is unique in this part of the state. So many of us are familiar with um, AP and DE as opportunities for students to earn post-secondary credit. International Baccalaureate is an, uh, also an opportunity for them to earn post-secondary credit, but it is recognized more globally. It is a global um, offering. Um, students can take that credit and attend perhaps Cambridge University or go to school in Japan. Um, it is just a much more broadly recognized opportunity. The Academy will offer college level coursework in English, history, math, science, arts, and foreign languages. In addition, Philip says the IB program uses a student centered curriculum that will inspire students to develop creativity, critical thinking, and communication skills. Within the Global Honors Academy, students can also um, graduate with that honors endorsement and that involves taking four either IB, DE, or AP courses and two of those need to be in the areas of math or science and so then they can earn that honors endorsement on their diploma in addition to whatever other academy they graduate from at Oxford High School. Applications for the 2024-25 school year are being accepted now through February 9th, and both residents and non-residents of Oxford City Schools District may apply for the IB program. At this time for Oxford High School, the only students who can apply as a non-resident or for non-residency um, status um, are students who plan to participate in the International Baccalaureate classes. Those classes are for rising juniors and seniors. It is a two-year program, and um, there is an application process, which you can find on our website, OxfordCitySchools.com, and the application for that process for non-residents includes both the non-residency application to be accepted as a non-resident student and the IB application. For current students, they can also find the application for IB status. Phillip says Oxford High School is a candidate for the IB Diploma Program, and they hope to win approval before the new school year starts. We are in the candidacy phase of becoming an IB school. Uh, we have applied, they, we have submitted our application, and we are in the review process right now. Um, they, once they review everything, they will send it back to us with either a two thumbs up or here are some things you need to tweak. We'll have a little time to tweak those send it back and then we'll schedule um, a visit. And we're hoping that by mid-summer, we will have been approved. When we return, Jacksonville's new city hall is just about ready to open. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family to enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waltrip Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Jacksonville City officials are getting ready to make the big move. 
That's because the municipality's new city hall, located behind the east side of the public square, is nearing completion. Benjamin Nunnally, a spokesman for Jacksonville, said the new $5.9 million building should be ready in February. The 12,500 square foot facility is being built atop the footprint of the old city hall. It was a 9,000 square foot mid-century structure that was used as a doctor's office before the city converted it for civic use. Uh, we had seen water damage, we had seen issues with um, electrical um, with electrical stuff. It, um, it had basically just outlived its ability to survive. Crews are putting the finishing touches on the new building and large columns and new lettering now dress up the structure's entrance. The parking lot has been curbed and brick covers the building facade. Nunley said that city employees are ready to transition to the new space, and he added that the benefit of the development goes beyond comfort and aesthetics. So for the city, I think that you want to be able to have your place of city government be a reflection of where you are as a city. Um, and the old building really wasn't that anymore. The old building, um, I don't want to say ramshackle, but it was kind of falling apart. It was in a place where it didn't really reflect where we are. Um, we've talked a lot recently about how Jacksonville is growing and how it's changing. And being able to invite people who are maybe interested in investing the city into a place that we can be proud of, uh, I think that, that kind of makes things better the whole way around. When we return, a question faces Anniston City officials to tattoo or not to tattoo. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. The Anniston City Planning Commission is holding a public hearing tonight at the City Meeting Center to consider allowing tattoo parlors in the downtown business district. According to the city's zoning map, the core district of Anniston covers most of the area around 10th and Noble Streets, extending several blocks in all directions. To learn more about the city's planning commission and zoning map, visit annistonal.gov forward slash planning dash commission. Well, it was 68 degrees this afternoon on my car thermometer. That pretty big change <laughs> from last Thursday. Oh, isn't it though? Yeah. You know, that was one of the first things that we said when we came in today. If you don't like the weather in Alabama, just wait a day. John Holder joins us now in the EAN Weather Center to tell us what tomorrow's weather brings. John? Mike and Katie, more of the same. We've got more warm weather and more wet weather coming to East Alabama. We will have the forecast for tomorrow and the weekend next. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. Temperatures just continue to rise all across East Alabama. Today, 71 for the high today, 16 degrees above the average. Our nighttime low last night was 61, and that is almost 30 degrees above the average. Record high temperature, 80, not too far from that. Certainly nowhere close to our record low, which was 5 degrees. Sun rising, 644 again tomorrow morning. But look at that sunset. The days continue to get longer, 507 this evening. Weather on your street on a Thursday night. Going to take out to Brookhaven Road in the Golden Springs area of Anniston. Evening showers and storms going to start a little bit earlier tonight than last night. 
and we're going to see again warm temperatures. We will stay in the 60s all night long, 60 for the low tonight in Golden Springs. Coming up on your Friday out on Almond Street in Heflin, it is going to be more of the same. Another warm day. Temperatures getting to 69 tomorrow in Heflin, maybe 70 on some backyard thermometers, and the rain continues. The flood watch that was supposed to expire at midnight tonight has now been extended all the way until 6 p.m. on Saturday evening, so more rainfall on the way. As we look at the weekend coming up, 60s and 50s for highs, 60s for the high on Saturday, cooling down to the 50s on Sunday. We'll also be wet for another day on Saturday. We'll be dry on Sunday. Pilgrim's Rest Road in Southside, let me just tell you what's going on here. There's a chance not only in Southside, but across the rest of East Alabama that we could have some, some strong to severe thunderstorms coming up late Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon. We will detail that for you tomorrow here as we get closer to the event, but just keep that in mind. One thing about it, it's going to be wet on Saturday. Let's take a look at the seven day forecast. Temperatures and rainfall remaining way above the average for the next couple of days. But by Sunday, we'll be back to where we should be for late January in Alabama. Some sunshine returning. We're going to hit another dry stretch coming up, and temperatures will be more seasonable as we move through the next several days. Back into the 50s for highs on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. A couple of cooler mornings coming up as we're back down to the 30s, but we don't see any 20s coming. We don't see any wintry precipitation certainly coming. We don't see any extreme cold weather coming to East Alabama. As a matter of fact, by the middle of next week, we're back in the 60s again with plenty of sunshine and those nighttime lows coming back up into the 40s. We had a lot of rain last night, and here is the 24-hour rainfall. This began at 7 a.m. on the 24th, ending at 7 a.m. this morning. And you can see here in East Alabama, most everybody anywhere from an inch and a half to two and a half inches of rainfall just in that 24-hour period. And keep in mind, this ended at 7 a.m. this morning. This does not include what we got today. So we are looking at plenty of rainfall and more on the way. We will have the complete forecast for all of East Alabama for your morning coming up tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. as we'll have your breakfast forecast. Now, Namath Pitts is going to preview high school basketball, some big games across the area tonight. He's got the preview right now. Namath. Thanks, John. White Plains tonight could clinch an opportunity to flip a coin to decide who hosts the boys area tournament. There's also other very important area games tonight here in East Alabama and some non-area games as well. So let's take a look at all the games for tonight. Let's start with Alexandria. This is a non-area game as the Valley Cubs are at home tonight. Coach Ginn and Coach Kiker both are set to host Talladega the Tigers. Talladega is again on the road tonight at Alexandria facing the Valley Cubs in non-area play. Also tonight, it's a big area game specifically for Chris Randall and the White Plains boys. There is a lot at stake tonight for the Wildcats. They make the trip tonight to Cleburne County with, an, with a win over Cleburne County. Coach Chris Randall would meet with then Coach Tress Busson of Jacksonville and a coin will be flipped. This is all dependent on Jacksonville winning tomorrow night, which is expected. So if White Plains wins tonight, Jacksonville wins tomorrow, those two will meet, flip a coin. If it lands on heads, one team's going to host. If it lands on tails, the other team's going to host. So a lot on the line when it comes to 4A area play between Cleburne County and White Plains. But Cleburne County could play Spooler and upset the Wildcats. Now in the girls, Coach Clay Sprayberry's team has lost 14 straight games. They look to break that streak tonight against Cleburne County. This one is a non-area game tonight at Ohatchee as Coach Aaron Jackson and Coach Kyle Wilson are set to host the Eagles of Hoax Bluff. Hoax Bluff is a Class 3A opponent, but this is a non-area game again as the Eagles make the trip to Ohatchee tonight to face the Indians. Also tonight, this one is an area game and it features the Galesville Trojans and the Jacksonville Christian Thunder. Coach Bryant of the Lady Thunder and Coach Tommy Miller of the Boy Thunder are at home tonight in Jacksonville. A big 1A area game when it comes to seating in the area tournament as the Jacksonville Christian Thunder host Galesville tonight in Jacksonville. Also tonight, this is non-area, but it is a little bit of a rivalry in a sense as the Ramburn Bulldogs are at home tonight over as close as you can get to the Georgia state line as they are set to host the Tigers of Randolph County. 
Class 3A Randolph County makes the trip to face Class 2A Ramburn and what is a little bit of a rivalry not too far from each other is this one set to play, take place tonight at Ramburn. Also tonight, this is a non-area of course, is it's Class 1A versus Class 2A. This is a makeup game from earlier this year. If you don't know, Pleasant Valley and Coosa Christian were set to play during the same day that Coosa Christian played in the Super 7 for football. That game had to be rescheduled. It was rescheduled for tonight as Coach Hood and Coach Muncher and the Pleasant Valley Raiders travel to Gadsden tonight to face the Conquerors of Coosa Christian. Tonight, it's senior night for Andy Fulmer and the Weaver Bearcats, and there's other teams in action tonight as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wrestling duels for tonight here in East Alabama. It's senior night tonight for Andy Fulmer and the Weaver Bearcats, and boy are they testing their competition. Senior night's supposed to be a night where you know you're going to dominate, you know you're going to win. Well, Coach Andy Fulmer does not back down from competition. Tonight on senior night, they'll recognize Chris Thornton, who's the lone boy senior for the Weaver Bearcats. And then, of course, they'll recognize Kenley Fulmer and uh, the girls seniors as well. But the Weaver Bearcats are set to host Coach Frank Hartsog and the Alexandria Valley Cubs. And they'll also host St. John Paul II, who they just wrestled in the state dual semifinals just, uh, you know, just a little over a week ago. So Weaver Bearcats at home tonight, where they will face Alexandria and St. John Paul II on senior night. And then tonight as well, Coach Jake Mayfield and the Cleburne County Tigers are getting geared up for the Piedmont Dog Fight as they head to Lincoln tonight. Cleburne County is going to face higher competition when they face Class 5A Lincoln, Class 6A Pell City, and Class 6A Shades Valley. Coach Jake Mayfield's team not backing down from competition tonight as they go to Lincoln to face the Golden Bears, the Panthers of Pell City, and then Shades Valley. And that's it for EA and local sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for the update, Namath, and thank you for watching today. You can find us here online every weekday on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, and on our website, eastalabamanow.com. Just go to our video feed and watch us whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Friday for your news on your schedule.